Time is now 6.30. I call this regular meeting of the Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551, with the amendment, you know, just to add that Trustee Pettis is absent. Uh, we would like to welcome and introduce the cadets. Cadet third class petty officer, Austin Rodriguez. Austin is a third year cadet and platoon leader. He is an active member of the physical fitness and marksmanship teams. Austin also completed the basic leadership training this summer at Texas A&M Kingsville. Cadet seaman apprentice, Gregorio Quiroga. Gregorio is a first year cadet, an active member of the color guard and drill team. He was on the sword arch team for homecoming and is an active member of the mighty Uvalde High School Band. He is quickly becoming a leader in the unit. Now, if you will please rise, if you are able for the invocation. <laughs> and to the republic for one under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. to the Texas, Honor Texas, to the Texas, 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 Almighty God, our Father in heaven, how holy is your name, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to come together tonight. And thank you, Father, for everyone here, our board members, staff, faculty, members of the public. Father, we're grateful for the opportunity to work for you, Lord, to bring our children to a safe place. That we're grateful, Father, for the campuses and the Valley and Batesville that work hard to teach diligently. And Father, these are hard times, but we trust in you. And Father, we just lift up these children to you today, because that's why we're here. We desire to do something for them, to teach them, to bring them strength, so that they will have knowledge when they leave here. Thank you, Father. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for watching over us. And Father, I just pray that uh, in such times that children will make up their minds and make right decisions, be careful what they do, especially uh, when they leave the campuses, Father, that we pray that they would return back safely. Thank you, Lord, for everyone here. Thank you for the hard work by our teachers, custodians, staff, faculty, everyone, Father. We're grateful for their work. Forgive us when we fall short, when we fail to miss the mark, and help us, Father, in the days ahead, and watch over us, please. For it's in Christ that we pray. Amen. Yes. Lord Mark. Wonderful job, cadets. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Item 1D, strategic plan reading. Dr. Harrell? Yes, Madam Board President. Uh, nice reading. Develop and implement a rigorous techno technological program that promotes advanced level learning that supports instruction with vertical collaboration and facilitated learning. Provide materials and training necessary to enable teachers to differentiate instruction in the classroom. Thank you, Dr. Harrell. Item two, open forum. We have nobody signed up. Thank you. Item three, the consent agenda. A, minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees held on September 20th, 2021. 
B, minutes of the special meeting of the Board of Trustees held on September 28, 2021. C, item of information regarding maintenance and operations. D, item of information regarding transportation. E, item of information regarding SFE. F, item of information on the district's investment activity for September 2021. G, item of information on the district's credit card activity for September 2021. H, item of information for revenues and expenditures as of September 2021. I, item of information on the tax collection activity for September 2021. J, item of information for the district's federal program activity for September 2021. A, item of information on student attendance. L, item of information on student discipline. Does any trustee wish to table an item? If not, I'll entertain my motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. I'll make a motion, Madam President, uh, Madam President to... Uh... <laughs> Approve the uh, consent agenda as presented. Second. First motion made by Trustee Fowler. Second motion made by Trustee Flores. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? The consent agenda has been accepted. Item four. Items of division of administration and operations. A. Consider and take possible action to approve proposed amendment to agreement for tax value limitation with Racetrack Solar LLC, originally approved September 28, 2021. Yes, Madam Board President, uh, this item has come back to us. We did meet on September 28th at the special board meeting. And at that time, we did approve the qualifying time period, the QTP which was going to run from 11-1-2021 to 12-31 of 2023. Uh, they have encountered and uh, expect possibly some supply chain issues. So what they are asking at this point is to extend that time, that qualifying time period uh, by two years. And that end date would then become 12-31 of 2025. If they can start earlier, they plan to do so, but they don't want to be caught short because of uh, getting necessary materials. That sounds fine to me. And the, the taxation, everything still would then be delayed as well, or it would start regardless of the start there? It would, it would be delayed as well. It coincides with right. the start date. Right. 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 Okay. And the other because, because I know we have that, uh, the, mm -hmm. The new legislation doesn't going to allow any 313s anymore after this year. So is that going to play to any, or since we already approved it, the way it's okay? The, yeah, the way I that they explained it during when we were, when we went and we listened to, it was one of the attorneys that held it. They said yeah. that once you start before that, we were, we're good. good. Yeah. We were good. Okay. As long as you have to start that prior to that. Yeah. yeah. Just want to make sure that we're good to have in the books. As long as awesome. you engage with that company before they. Perfect. Okay. And we are. <laughs> Administration recommends the approval. Madam Board President, I make a motion that we approve the proposed amendment to agreement for tax value limitation with Racetrack Solar LLC as presented and authorize the Board President to execute the amendment on behalf of the district. I'll second. First motion made by Trustee Fabanda, second motion made by Trustee Perez. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Item 4B, consider approval of Uvalde CISD votes for Uvalde County Appraisal District Board Member Candidates. Yes, Madam Board President, previous board meeting, we had sent in our uh, nominees to be placed on the ballot. Uh, the ballot has come back with those three nominees on it. Uh, we are entitled, we being Uvalde CISD, entitled to 954 votes uh, to be allocated amongst or for one or for two of these individuals. There are three seats that are open. There are three uh, names on the ballot. My recommendation is to divide all votes equally and, and assert so. 
That'd be what, 318 for each one, for each candidate. Yeah. I think they did, it's 318. 318. 318. Yes, sir. Madam Board President, I make a motion that we have, uh, split the 954 votes amongst all three candidates with 318 going to each candidate as presented. Second. Uh, motion made by Luis Fernandez. Second motion made by Elisa Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. Motion passes unanimously. Item 4C. Consider approval of CDS Murray's Murray's contractor recommendation for Dalton Paving Project. Yes, Madam Board President. Mr. Harrison, Rodney Harrison, and John Rodu of CDS Murray Engineering Services have been working together and uh, designed the scope of this project, uh, designed uh, the needs, the, the size, the dimensions, all that goes into it. And uh, this project had gone out to bids. We received two bids and we opened up the bids uh, 3 p.m. on Tuesday. October 19th, and uh, at that time, uh, Mr. Rohde took them back and did an evaluation of the uh, bid, individual who bid, and came back with a, a rating sheet, and the rating came back. His recommendation is J.R. Sightwork. J.R. Sightwork has done uh, lots of work for the district uh, in a paving area, and we've had a very good working relationship, and when we found something to be amiss, he would come back and uh, make it as, as designed by, by the engineer. Oh, so I cool. recommend that we follow CDS Murray's recommendation and allow negotiations to start with JR site. Madam Board President, I make a motion that we approve and accept the CDS Murray recommendation and allow negotiations with JR site work to go ahead and begin. A second. <clears throat> Motion made by Trustee Fowler, second motion made by Trustee Pettis. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? This motion passes unanimously. Item 4D, consider approval of data center server upgrades. Yes, Madam Board President, as we move forward and uh, upgrades become necessary with our data center, uh, we are continually upgrading and trying to keep the very best services in our not in our data center uh, that we, we possibly can. Uh, we are at a point now to uh, upgrade our storage array. Cash could tell you what that is. I, I just can read. It. I don't know. <laughs> this will come out of ESSER funds. It's an opportunity for us to utilize some extra funds so that we can keep in connection with our kids and, and our teachers if we ever have to use that piece out off campus again. But it also, it does allow us operation on a daily basis in our district. Right now, I was talking to Mr. Cash Keith earlier today. This unit is 160 days out at, at best, six months. So the sooner we can get in line, the sooner we can get in the interior. Yeah, uh, as of 1031 uh, with Cisco services, mm -hmm. all uh, equipment's going to go up 7%. Yep. So uh, we've got the money allocated within the ESSER grant. Uh, this will keep us up to date uh, in our data center and keep it fresh and keep it operating it's rapid speed. I recommend that we approve the purchase of this unit. Madam Board President, I make a motion that we approve the purchase in the amount of $96,764.53 from Stacklink LLC for UCISD data center server upgrades. Second. Motion made by Trustee Fowler, second motion made by Trustee Flores. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. Motion carries unanimously. Item 4E, consider approval of two vehicles for the Uvalde CISD Family Outreach Specialists. 
Yes, Madam Board President, this is another Eschler initiative for the district. We have hired some family outreach specialists uh, to go and serve families to uh, find students who are struggling, families who are struggling that are members of our district. And uh, it's going to take some home visits to do that. Uh, we hope to find two uh, half ton pickups. We have some country roads that cars aren't going to be appropriate to cross. All right. So we uh, hope to find two half ton pickups, not to exceed $35,000, uh, to purchase for our outreach specialist. Uh, I think that might be a challenge, but we're going to be up for right. the challenge. And I hope we talk to Ford and some other places here locally. Uh, they're hopeful we can get them, but they're not going to commit to full. So it's on here for two vehicles. So if it's uh, GMC, a Chevy, Ford, whatever, we, we just need to be able to get those, secure those for our outreach sessions. And this is to target students who are um, struggling more than, so it's a like a niche. It, 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 for, yeah, it's going to be a pointed effort. Okay. Um, whether That's good. Through, we have identified through attendance, through social emotional opportunity okay. learning. All right. Yes. Madam Board President, I make a motion that we uh, approve the purchasing of two half ton pickups, not to exceed thirty-five thousand dollars per vehicle, as presented. I'll second. Motion made by Trustee Fernandez. Second motion made by Trustee Perez. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Item 4F, consider approval of van purchase for the Uvalde CISD technology and food packet delivery. Yes, Madam Board President, another ESSER, ESSER initiative uh, with all the pieces we had going through technology and uh, getting technology out, secured and distributed at times, as well as what we, what we experienced in getting food packets. Mm -hmm from organizational pieces and deliver to the campuses. We needed a vehicle that would provide that opportunity to do so effectively and efficiently. So uh, we will use the van on the technology side and then we do encounter another stay at home time and we have to deliver packets, food packets in, and we'll have a vehicle to do that, that, that service. So aside from the quarantine, Let's say when we do have like children who are suffering from an illness outside of the, what we're currently experiencing, let's say cancer or some some type of some other type of autoimmune, like if they become diabetic and you know when they first encounter this, it, it's it can be very challenging for a family. Would this also be something that we will start utilizing to also maybe reach them that way to take them food because I mean they qualify for all of this. Absolutely, that was specialist. I think that's something. A service that will just enhance what we do. And, uh, yeah, from a problem that we've encountered, a disruption, mm -hmm. we are going to find good things that come out of it. And that would be absolutely one of those opportunities. Okay, perfect. That's good. And these vans are hard to get a hold of right now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, just just anything, any kind of <laughs> vehicle. If you look at the lots, they're just kind of they look kind of empty of this kind yeah. of stuff. It's yeah. yeah, so we hope we're hopeful. We want to be in position to find one. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, Madam Board President, I make a motion that we approve the purchasing of one medium to high top transit van not to exceed $45,000 as presented. Okay. Second. Motion made by Trustee Fernandez, second motion made by Trustee Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Hearing none, on uh, all in favor. Like, hmm. <laughs> motion passes unanimously. Five, items of division of business and finance. A, consider approval of accounts payable checks for September 2021. Yes, Madam Board President. Uh, we have paid the bill, presented the bills to our <laughs> individuals, and we would like to pay the bills. Uh, Madam Board President, I make a motion to approve the accounts payable for the month of September 2021 as presented. Second. Motion made by Trustee Fernandez, second motion made by Trustee Flores. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. 5B, consider approval of budget amendment number one. 
Yes, Madam Board President. Everyone should have pages looks similar like this at your place. This is budget amendment number one that's going to be presented. The money that uh, we'll be requesting is money that we had approved to use last school year, but the work had not completed. Okay. So we had to kind of have a, a stop date, uh -huh. bring that money back in that was unspent, okay. and now we're just asking for it back. As you can see, the roofing that we started last school year is still going on. So we just had a stop date, and whatever we paid at that date, we suspended, and what was unpaid, we brought back in kind of for a year end piece. But now we're asking for it. let's finish that project that we're currently doing, and it's the roofing and auditorium lighting. So, uh, did the the sound check the sound check get done at the auditorium, or is that something separate? That's, that's something separate. Okay. Oh. Uh, Madam Board President, I make a motion we approve budget amendment number one as presented. Second. Motion made by Trustee Fernandez. Second motion made by Trustee Fowler. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. 5C, consider approval to purchase banned instruments. Yes, Madam Board President. As we move forward and continue uh, to improve our band program and strengthen our band program, we are in need of some new band instruments. We're not getting rid of anything. We're right. just going to polish that, but we do have a need for some new instruments. Uh, our band director, Abel Granados, is here. If you have any questions, but the, uh, he and Mr. Rodriguez have worked on the instruments, the number of instruments, the type of instruments, and put together a list. And Mr. Rodriguez, you want to? Yeah, so I'll let Mr. Grinnells give a description of what we're purchasing, but these are also for UDLA, for the new band program there, and for Batesville as well. So they're upgrading Flores, uh, and we're also replacing instruments uh, at the high school in Morales. So Mr. Yes, sir. Oh, we're going to be purchasing brass instruments, uh, tubas, baritones, trombones, baritones, uh, to be used for band programs, UDLA, Batesville, as well as Flores, um, as well as trumpets. We're also getting woodwind instruments that will be partitioned, uh, you know, will be spread between Batesville, UDLA, and and uh, and Morales. This is really going to help us with our band program. We're in a we're in a period of growth right now, uh, and we'd like to really grow the band program more than than it is right now. I mean, it's great. It's a wonderful program that we have here. I just need numbers. I need members, uh, and this purchase would definitely help to that end. So uh, I would appreciate that. Board. Thank you. So let me ask you something right quick, sir. Yes. So, do the parents have the student? Do they have options to purchase? Um, uh, yes, uh, no, no, uh, normally the way we run it right now is we have school owned instruments that we provide, mm -hmm. uh, but if a, a student chooses to, to place an order or wants to buy a personal instrument for their own, uh, then we do that. They, they can do that through high school music service. They have that option. And uh, high school music service offers a rent to own plan for our parents. It's very flexible. Uh, it works well for our parents who work uh, and it, it, it's, it's the ability to get the, the, the instrument to their the student. So that's what they do if they can't get on a school owned instrument. That's the option that they have. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank Madam you, Madam Board President. I'll make a motion that we approve the request uh, for purchase of band instruments totaling 700. Let's make it $78,985.62 for the award winning UHS marching band. I'll second. Uh, motion made by Trustee Fowler, second motion made by Trustee Fettis. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. 5C, uh, consider approval of vendor list for 2021-2022 school year. Yes, Madam Board President. We bring the vendor list to the board at the beginning of the school year, but as the year progresses, there may be a need to add vendors to that list. Just as we just approved the high school music service, we've added them to this list. The other one that's new to this list is DDW Consulting, and they provide the services on ACE grant writing. So uh, they helped us secure the ACE grant 
and uh, added them to the list. Those are the two that will be added on this revised list. And as the year progresses and there's a need, we'll bring it back to the board. Madam Board President, I make a motion that we approve the attached listing of vendors for the potential to be paid in excess of $25,000 during the 2021-2022 school year presented. Okay. Motion made by Trustee Fernandez, second motion made by Trustee Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Six items of division of curriculum and instruction. A, consider approval of annual district and campus performance goals and objectives for the 2021-2022 school year. Yes, Madam Board President. Uh, Mr. Michael Rodriguez, Deputy Superintendent has walked up. He will walk us through this document. You should have it at your place. At the cover sheet, looks like most everybody found it. Rodriguez, thank you very much. All righty. So uh, it's that time of the year uh, uh, where we bring to you the board our district improvement uh, uh, plan, our goals that we set for ourselves as a district, and as well as each campus individual goals that they work through. So the process that we've taken is, of course, we sit, uh, each campus sits there and looks at their data with their leadership team. Uh, they'll go through and look at where their scores were. Uh, we'll look at the, all sources of data. Uh, uh, we'll look at Star Renaissance. We'll look at TPRI. We'll look at Star Scores. Uh, we'll look at uh, SAT, ACT scores. And then the team will decide what their new district and uh, campus initiatives are going to be. Uh, the district improvement plan is based off of Dr. Harold's uh, pillars and uh, goals that we see he sets for for the district. And we take those goals and we 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 look at the data, same process. We just do it at our level, and then we run it by the principals, and then we run it by directors. So all these goals have gone through teachers, have gone through campus leadership teams, they've gone through directors, they've gone through senior staff. And now the last phase of the process is bringing it forward to you. So as you can see, there are plenty of goals and objectives. And many, geez, oh, there we go. So uh, I'll, I'm gonna skim through them. If you have any questions on any specific ones, just let me know. So the first goal uh, for you, the district is enrichment and exposure. Students will be highly engaged in real world learning and enrich academic experiences. So you'll see the first uh, uh, goal we have for ourselves is by June 2022, the percentage of early learners pre-K to second performing at approaches will increase by 10%, meets by 5%, and masters by 2% in reading and math compared to 2021. So as you notice, what we do nowadays is we have to take an average of the approaches, meets, and masters. And we've been doing this for the last couple of years already, but that's something that you may not recall that before it was just approaches we were looking at, but now we're looking at the average approaches, meets and masters to make sure that we get our school to that level where we need to get them uh, as far as meeting uh, TA requirements so we don't fall into any uh, improvement required. So you'll, as you go through, there's different goals, uh, uh, different strategies under goal one. Uh, you'll look at number eight. Uh, by June 2022, 90% of students will rate their uh, iPad learning experience a four or higher. So the district has made a big investment in our iPads. We want to make sure that the students feel comfortable using them through our training, through the teacher's use of them. Are we using them on a daily basis? Are there any barriers? And that will come in the form of surveys that we give students and we'll get information back and data back collected that way. So uh, goal two, all students will learn in a culture that promotes individual growth and resiliency. Yeah, we'll look at uh, number four, by the end of the school year, 21-22, at least 60% of all emergent bilingual students will exhibit significant, significant growth in Spanish proficiency de development as measured by Spanish language screeners in reading and math. So we want to see uh, at least 60 hours of our 60% uh, of our students uh, showing that emergent level uh, uh, where they need to be at. Uh, uh, so sh showing significant growth there. Uh, we'll look at uh, goal three, social emotional support. Students will learn in a culture that builds upon prior learning and prepare them for their future experiences. So let's take a look at, uh, let's look at number two is an easy one to uh, reference. 
by June 2022, the district office referral, disciplinary referral will decrease from 11.3% to 9%. That's easy to measure. That's something that the APs track all year round. And we, as we sit there with principals throughout the year, throughout our PLCs monthly, we'll review data and we'll be referring back to that goal as well. Goal four, graduation and attendance. Students will be encouraged to attend school regularly so that schools can support them in academics and behavior. By number one, by 2022, 92% of the class of graduating uh, 2021 will receive a high school diploma. So as you can see, that continues and we'll still be tracking those numbers as well. Goal number six, this comes from the office of Anne Marie, communications and community involvement, increased partnerships and engagement with staff, parents, students, and community. Uh, number two there, district will promote effective community relations and meaningful communication with all stakeholders. We also receive feedback on there uh, uh, when we survey our parents, our teachers, and our community members uh, uh, as far as are they hearing about our events? Do they know, uh, are we using the different platform forms uh, uh, consistently and effectively? Are principals communicating on a regular basis with their parents through via newsletters, uh, Schoology and things of that nature. So those are the district ones. And as we, you'll see the next couple pages, uh, you'll see each campus's goals. Again, I'll go through each one uh, quickly and I'll pick one that we'll kind of discuss. So we'll look at Batesville. We'll look at, uh, let's see, the, uh, goal number three, social emotional activities. Students will learn in an environment that encourages and supports students' learning styles and prepares them for future opportunities and success. Uh, the first one there, performance objective one, by the end of the year, 100% of Batesville students will participate weekly in social and emotional and learning lessons instructed by school counselor. So that's an easy one to measure. They want to make sure that all their kids have run through the school counselor for their social emotional learning activities there. Uh, we'll go to Crossroads Academy. We'll go to number two there. Uh, we will utilize an increased focus on T-test student learning objective goal setting and artifact archival toward meeting and exceeding our graduation goal for 2021. It should be saying 21, 22. So I missed that on that one there. Uh, uh, let's see. No, exceeding. No, that's correct. Exceeding it. That's right. Performance objective number one, Crossroads Academy will meet or exceed their annual goal of 40 graduates for their 2021 school year through a renewed focus on love, high expectation and restorative education. So that would be saying 21, 22, and they already have three graduates as of this year already. So he's uh, well on his way, uh, uh, him and his team of meeting that mark there. So uh, good job there. Uh, Dalton early uh, childhood, uh, we look at uh, number one, enrich and exposure, students will be introduced to and will be involved in new learning and experiences. Uh, objective number one there, ELAR, by end of year, 80% of Dalton students will make significant growth, 5%, as defined by Dalton's academic growth goal sheet, 21-22 uh, in the ELAR, as measured by the STAR Renaissance, TPRI, and Fontis and Purnell for first grade and kinder and circle for pre-K as well circle will be for pre-K. Uh, as, as we shared in the Friday notes, you saw that uh, Ms. Pruitt had already started uh, her data teacher talks and uh, that's what she was going and covering with them, uh, seeing where the teachers are, what barriers we need to remove from them. If there's any more PD, do we need to budget some more uh, uh, materials for them? And that's where these, uh, uh, all those conversations are to achieve this, one of those goals right there, achieve student achievement. Mm -hmm. We'll go to Flores Elementary. We'll go to goal uh, number two. Uh, students will learn in a culture that promotes individual growth, well-being, and resiliency. Uh, so objective number one, by June 2022, 75% of students will be involved in the student activity. UIL, ACE, Student Council, uh, Gamma, Sigma Girls, Coyote Mentoring, and After School or Saturday Mentoring. So I commend uh, Mr. Perez and his admin team for this goal here. It's getting students involved, right? We, we know that students don't get in trouble or lose interest because 
uh, 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 when we know they get in trouble or lose interest is because they're not involved uh, in extra, uh, either before school or after school. So that's a great goal for Flores there. For the Morales Junior High, goal number two, we will develop and train and retain highly effective educators, provide the tools they need to maximize all students' success. So performance objective one by June, 2022, 100% of staff will be provided multiple avenues for professional development designed to transform the learning experience of students. Again, that's a, a, a really good a goal for his team is, is really putting the onus back on his admin team in working with CNI and providing PD according to the needs of the teachers and the staff. Uh, uh, it's up to us as principals and leaders of instructional leaders on the campus to really remove those barriers. What are our teachers lacking? Where, where do they need to grow? And it's up to us to uh, provide that PD for them. So that's a good go. Go to uh, Rob Elementary. Uh, we'll go to number one. Students will be highly engaged in real world learning and enrich academic experiences. We'll go down to the third bullet there. Objective number three. By June 2022, the number of students performing on grade level or higher meets or masters will increase on STAR math by eight percentage points from 30 to 38 percent. So they're, they're not even looking at approaches in this goal. They're really looking, focusing in on the meets and masters. And uh, that's a good goal as well. That's setting the bar a little bit higher in that area. And uh, we know as a district, math is one of our weaker areas and one of the growth uh, areas that we need uh, a lot of growth in. So she's picked that as one of their goals there. So that's a good job for Rob Elementary. And it should be the Dual Language Academy, our new campus. Uh, we'll go back, let's see, we'll go back to number one. Uh, go one, objective one by June, 2022, the percentage of dual language early learners, pre-K to second performing that approaches will increase by 10% meets by 5% and masters by 2% in reading and math compared to 2021. So as you look at our, our campuses that have early childhood in the lower grades, you'll see that they have goals written for them, not just the star grade levels, uh, because we know that if we don't close the gap in pre-K K and first, we're, uh, our, our star grade levels are, where are the gaps are gonna grow wider. So uh, we're glad to see that his team has picked a lower grade uh, a goal to set for themselves. And now we go to, uh, let's go to the Uvalde High School. We'll go to goal number four, graduation and attendance. Uh, uh, students will be encouraged to attend school regularly so that schools can support them in academics and behavior. So objective number one, uh, by 2022, UHS attendance rate will be 91.5%. And you'll see the graduation uh, goal that they set for, set for themselves is, 93.5% uh, of the graduating class will, will receive a high school diploma. So uh, some good goals there, set right there. That should be the last of it there. And that is, uh, any questions on the process uh, or any of the goals that you see set forth either by the district or for individual campuses? A lot right there, right? It's a lot of information. I have a quick question. And I'm sure you're surprised, but um, how often, when you were talking about surveys, how often do you take heartbeats on some of these goals? Like, let's say the iPad mm -hmm. with the students. Um, how often, so that you can have, so that you can measure how yeah. their relationship with the iPad. This year, what we going. talked about in CNI is our goal is two times a year. Okay. Yeah, we want to see where they're at uh, because we don't want to wait till the end of the year because right. by that time. We've gone, gone the whole year. So here at the end of the semester, we want to look at uh, having a parent survey, a student survey, a teacher survey, uh, just on iPad usage, you know, where we're at. Uh, are, they, are there barriers? Like we found out there were some Wi-Fi issues at the high school. We've remedied those. Uh, uh, so, yes, yeah, so two times a year for that specific, specific one. On a lot of the other ones, you'll see the academic ones. We're looking at data on a weekly basis. Uh, uh, those will be done through RTI uh, processes, through uh, teacher data talks, through uh, unit assessments, 
through screeners, through benchmarks. So we'll get, we always get tons of data when it comes to the academic side. So that's just constant. And the surveys are distributed through? Uh, we'll, we'll talk, it'll probably more than like online. It, it, they'll be online. We get a good response like a by Google that. Google survey? Is it like a Google survey? Or? It depends. Uh, I, I'm, it depends how we want to collect the data. So if we want to be able to create graphs and, and bar graphs, we might have to use a little bit of different survey. If it's just a quick questionnaire, maybe a Google survey. So there's different formats that we use uh, throughout the district. Some of them work better for different tasks and what we're trying to accomplish. So we haven't decided on that yet, but that will be coming out. And what we'll do is we'll send you the, we'll actually include y'all in the survey so you can see the sample of it and what it looks like. So um, that first one versus what the end of the year to see yes. what the students. Yes. Uh, the end of the year will be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more detailed, a little bit longer. But we don't, especially for students, we try not to make them too long Absolutely. because we'll lose them after six questions. <laughs> good goals. All right. Lofty goals. We do our job. Uh, good job getting, uh, reaching every one of them. So. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay. All right. Thank you. Madam yes. President, I make a motion we approve the district and capital improvement plan for 2021-2022 as presented. I'll second. Motion made by Trustee Fernandez. Second motion made by Trustee Perez. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Already six. B, item of information on extracurricular, no pass, no play. Yeah, so uh, uh, along with the goals and the district goals and setting yourself up for success, we have to get kids involved. And, and uh, our coaches and sponsors have always done a good job. But I think what you're going to see from these numbers is that they're even doing a better job this year. And so I'll go through a couple of slide presentations highlighting each one. And then Coach Miller actually has a handout that breaks down the athletic portion a little bit more deeper. So okay. uh, we'll start off. The first one we're looking at is uh, Mr. Granados and uh, uh, with his great number uh, uh, achievement the other day in competition. Uh, number of students participating in the program is 91. Uh, the ones that were affected that weren't able to, that uh, failed the first quarter, 19, which included eighth grade marching uh, students as well. Uh, uh, so what are some of the interventions that him and his uh, directors are, are implementing? They're doing uh, uh, peer tutoring among different sections, faculty tutorials with Mr. Tony Villariat, instructional help during practice time and on a case-by-case -case basis, and grade monitoring by Ben and uh, uh, via Skyward. So the whole message is how are we being proactive? And they've done a really good job of being proactive and not just being reactive on, on how we're ensuring these kids are participating and being successful. Uh, ROTC, uh, Lieutenant Ted and his, his team, his team has done, done an excellent job there. You see that 100 students in the program, uh, which includes uh, eight grade and zero failures. Zero, uh, so his, his program, cadets are given time in class to work on classes they are failing. Cadets are assigned senior cadets to study with, so a peer, a peer uh, tutoring there. Instructors will contact core teachers for assignments as well. So his, his program is working. Uh, we have uh, Coach Miller, uh, uh, new to our district, but doing a great job. This is just for seventh and eighth grade. Uh, 232 participants in tennis, football, volleyball, and cross country. He had 59 students uh, affected by the uh, program, by, uh, by the failures. Uh, what they've implemented at the middle school is ineligible students can have only after school or morning practice. This enables the students to attend tutorials either morning or afternoon, communication with parents, with lower grades and weekly grade checks. Uh, uh, we know that middle school is always a little bit more challenging, but we also want to send a stronger message to them that they have to do their work in the classroom before they can have fun on the field. So uh, uh, they're, they're sending that message there. Uh, high school, uh, 262 participants in swimming, tennis, uh, football, volleyball, and cross country. Uh, his numbers are much better there. There only has 39 students that were affected. Uh, in, ineligible students attend only morning or afternoon practices, uh, which enables students to attend tutoring. Uh, on the weeks of quarter exam study hall from 4.30 to 5.30, uh, 
Afternoon practice cannot start till after until 5.30 after tutoring. Weekly grade checks and contact with parents of students who have uh, grades less than 70. And he was telling me that's the biggest effect right there. The biggest uh, impact is the contact with the parents. You know, most of the time the parents, you know, they hear from the kid and the kid says, oh, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. And then when the coach calls, it's a little bit different. So that's good. Uh, uh, Miss Patrice De La Cruz with her cheer numbers, he's at 28. Excellent job there. All her kids made it through uh, the first quarter. Uh, she does after school tutorials uh, for borderline students that are passing or, or failing uh, at, at progress report time. And she has constant communication with the parents. So good job there for Miss Patrice. Uh, and then for Miss Nina Hosa for the high steppers, she has 18 participating and only three were affected. She had mandatory tutorials parent contact and students attended uh, practice only at uh, Coach Miller, you wanna pass out that flyer, Coach Miller? And she only had uh, students attending practices and only mandatory tutorials for completion. And then what Coach Miller is gonna hand out is a little bit more detailed break at, breakdown of his numbers. Uh, so you can take a little bit more uh, closer look at that as well. And they will be available you, for sir? any questions. Thank you, Coach Miller. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, I got kind of really interested in this when when we were asked to fill this out. So I started with my football program, and then I wanted to check them all. And basically, I divided them all out, you know, by their teams, and then the percentage passing rate by each team, and then overall in each program. And a couple of things that you know, mainly we now know what what areas we need to hit. Um, I think junior high football and tennis were the ones that really need to be hit on the hardest but they're still over 70% passing rate. Um, so I was really pleased to A with the numbers and B with the percentage of kids that, that were doing their work in the classroom. Let me ask you something right quick, Coach Miller. When it says here for um, UCSD athletics grades nine through 12, what, on the weeks of quarter exam, study hall from 4.30 to 5.30, is that all the sports? Well, it basically the morning, the ones that have practice in the morning, they're free to come in tutorials anytime they want, mm -hmm. and they're invited to come with us. But for the afternoon practice sports, they they have to they have to do tutorials before they go practice. Oh. And those tutorials, coach, are just for the ones that are borderline. No, actually, well, I know for all the other, but for football, I make them all go in there, and they go to different coaches' rooms, and that way the guys that have got their stuff done or know how to do their stuff, they can help. And I found out over the years that that tends to be the big – that week is usually the biggest factor whether my football kids stay eligible or not. Um, and generally, like with the volleyball and, and cheer was 100%, um, usually those they're, – they're not near as affected as what the football team is because a lot of times they'll have cuts and so on and so forth. But – I found that that week and making all the kids come in and they'll help each other and this stuff will get done. Like mentors. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, coach. Item 6D, item of information on teacher incentive allotment. Fed Board President, Dr. Garza, stepping up. Walk us through this document. You should have this at your place as well. The PowerPoint. Speaker, attend the lot. Garza, I see. Yes. Good evening. Um, this is just a quick update on the work that the district has been doing. Um, along with various uh, campus and departmental representatives to launch uh, our efforts for the teacher incentive allotment. So this came down from House Bill 3, and you might have heard it in the news called like performance pay and that sort of thing. Um, really the intent of the funding was to help districts uh, increase teacher compensation for top performing teachers. And then in doing so to help us attract and retain highly effective teachers in high stakes, hard to staff areas. So um, in a nutshell, 
the, the name of the game is to gain a designation. Um, a designation equals compensation. So the two pathways that a teacher can uh, follow to earn a designation is, uh, the first one is by getting nationally board certified. That will get them the recognized designation. Um, and the other way is to actually get a designation from a system that is created locally. And so locally, we create a three-tiered system that will give them the designation, recognize, exemplary, or master. So once they earn that designation, that goes on their state board of educators certification uh, certificate you know, at, at the state level, and that stays on there for five years. The district designation system, I mentioned that there are three tiers. Look something like this. Um, there's a recognized tier, an exemplary tier, and a master tier. And the additional compensation that a teacher can get for each of the tiers varies from district to district, even from campus to campus. So the first number that you see, for example, for recognized, that's most of our schools here in the city limits in Uvalde. The higher end is what you see for Batesville because Batesville has a higher eco dis and has a higher uh, level of, I guess, rural status. Um, those, that number is higher. And so that's how they're treating all the campuses statewide. The more uh, of, a, of a high poverty level that, that they serve and the more rural the campus is, the higher the number. So that's, how, that's where those numbers come from. So on the opposite end with the master level, a teacher can earn additional compensation if they reach that level uh, of 20,876 for most of our schools here in New Valley. And then at Batesville, 29,760. So TEA is asking us uh, as we develop our system to put two key components in place. They're requiring that we come up with a teacher observation system. We can either develop a new one or we can use one that we have used in the past. So in the past, uh, our teachers, our principals have been used to using the T-test system. And so that's the one we're going uh, to be continuing to use and really uh, work on calibrating and getting that as accurate as possible because that has already gone through the process of of vetting for validity and reliability. The second component is they wanna know, how are you gonna measure student performance? Um, most districts that we've studied are using uh, growth to, to do that. So in other words, if a teacher wants to get a designation, they need to be able to show, this is what my student did in a pretest, and this is what they did in a post-test. And this growth is what determines that highly effective teacher. So the big challenge that, that we have is to come up with the instrument that will measure the growth. So that's where the steering committee currently is, um, is looking at different instruments that, again, um, have been proven to be valid and reliable. They won't have test bias. They won't have any kind of bias like that that would skew data. So that's, that's where we currently are. The Teacher Incentive Allotment Steering Committee is comprised of uh, these teachers. Like I mentioned earlier, we have one representative from each campus. We also have some representation from uh, the different departments at Central Office and in CNI. So we have a, a good cross section. We've had some very hearty discussions. Uh, this is the timeline that we have used we kicked off in August. We've had some training that's been ongoing with national board certification, with T, uh, TEA, with Region 20. We get as much training as we can just to get a wide view of, of what all is going on. We are cohort eight, I mean, cohort E. So there are four cohorts that have gone before us. So we're looking at to see what lessons learned uh, we can pick up. So that training is ongoing. Um, with our stakeholder groups, we have shared this information with uh, principals and instructional staff. Um, and we had our, our meeting here in October um, last week. 
And um, of course, now we're sharing here with the board and our meetings will continue. We expect the application for our cohort to be released next month, in which case we'll have more targeted work uh, for the remainder of the semester with the steering committee. I just wanted to share with everybody like where we are in the process and what this funding is is uh, intended for. Any questions? Dr. Garza, thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Garza. Thank you and your committee for um, all the work that y'all are doing because it is quite substantial. <laughs> y'all are doing a lot of heavy lifting. Item seven, superintendent's report. A, future board meetings. Yes, Madam Board President. Uh, next board meeting, regular scheduled board meeting is November the 15th. Just right before the Thanksgiving break. It's amazing how fast this year is progressing and it's a rapid rate. Uh, another document you should have in place is orange document gives you Activities happening this week. Yeah, a few things coming up in the very near future as well. Uh, a few other items I'd like to cover. Our uh, high school Lobo cross country team ran today at regionals. Uh, for Mr. Miller, Coach Miller, they ran a very good race. They uh, bettered their times. Corpus was a very difficult place to run today. I think it was quite humid, the report that I've got. But they performed very well and had a great season. Great job, young ladies. Uh, UHS will be administering the PSAT and MSQT on campus tomorrow for 10th and 11th graders. Uh, students will need to bring their own calculators if they'd like to use one. During that time, the freshmen will do, be doing a blitz for end of course test. And the seniors will be taking their panoramic senior picture and then some other required trainings and activities that we have over senior class. Uh, tomorrow, I will be at, Re uh, at Horseshoe Bay, actually, uh, for a Region 20, Region 13, and Region 12 Superintendent's Conference, which starts tomorrow at noon and will be ending on noon on Wednesday. Speaking of Wednesday, the Halloween Parade will be this Wednesday. Uh, as always, I'm sure there'll be lots of ghosts and goblins out walk uh, walking, so watch where you drive. On Thursday, October the 28th, Region 13 and a uh, member of the Spanish Ministry will be visiting the Valley High School, Morales Junior High, and the Dual Language Academy. And Dr. Perón is uh, coordinating this effort. On uh, Saturday, our band, our mighty uh, coyote marching band, the Valley High School marching band, will be traveling to Cal Allen to the Area E marching contest. Uh, we are looking for charter buses. We are on several waiting lists. Mika, I think she is making a nuisance of herself, which I told her to do. <laughs> But she, she can do it in a nice way, so it worked out okay. But Mr. Granados, yeah, uh, our thoughts and hearts will be with you on, on Saturday. And what time do y'all leave? Oh, we're leaving on at 10 30. 10 30? Okay. And if y'all do well, then you move to the next level that evening? Yes, sir. Uh, it's two rounds of preliminary and finals. If the band gets full place or better, we advance to the final round and then we march again. That's going to be prime time. 17 to 10, 25. Oh, wow. And then uh, whoever makes the top four of the finals has to go to state marching. Um, best so, of luck, y'all do well. In states in San Antonio? I don't know, Cal, high school posters. But state? Oh, but state? All state is at the Alamo Bowl. In San Antonio, right? That's right. Yeah. You're hoping so y'all be close to home. That's right. Thank you. And as we continue to move forward, uh, Thanksgiving lunches are being planned. Uh, Thanksgiving lunches will be pre-K through sixth grade campuses. And then we'll do Christmas lunches for the secondary campuses. That's what I've got. Any questions, any thoughts? Just flying. The year is flying. It is. It's going well. We had a great week last week, homecoming week. Our kids performed extremely well. Our sponsors and uh, everybody involved uh, did a wonderful job getting everything prepared, planned, and it was just, it was a great week. It was, yes, sir. Great week to be a coyote and a lobo. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
All right, then. Well, the time is now 729. And we will be moving into closed session. A closed session will be held under provisions of Texas Government Code, Chapter 551, Sections 551.071 and 551.074. A, deliberations concerning approval of teacher and professional contracts, employments, assignments, suspensions, and terminations. The board will now move into closed session.
43. The board is reconvened from closed session for action relevant to items covered during closed session. A, consider and take possible action concerning approval of personnel employments, assignments, suspensions, and terminations. Sir Carroll? Yes, Madam Board President, I'd like to recommend the two uh, individuals for employment with UCISD, Silvestre Lorente and Jorge Martin, both dual language teachers at UDLA. Madam Board President, I make a motion that we hire these professional educators to be part of the uh, UCISD team. I'll second. second. Motion made by Trustee Fowler, second motion made by Trustee Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, item 10, adjournment. Madam Board President, I make a motion we adjourn. A second. Any further discussion? I mean, motion made by Trustee Fernandez, Trustee made by second by Trustee Pettis. Pettis. Just for the record, Ms. Pettis, you can me. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Dr.